Hello everyone, this is Josh Caswell from the Monroe County Public Library, and today I'd like to talk to you about doing photo editing on your phone. As we probably all know, Adobe is the go-to program for editing photos. However, you don't always have access to a computer, and Adobe can be pretty expensive. That said, you can actually do a lot of photo editing on the go on your mobile device, or any device that has internet access. Today I'm going to show you how to do that on an application called Pixlr. If you're not familiar with Pixlr, it was originally a web app, but now they've actually turned it into a phone app that's free. It does have a few paid features such as removing ads, but if you want to use it for free, it's very versatile and easy to use. I'm actually going to use it on an Android emulator on my computer just to get better video, but it's actually on both app stores, Android and iOS. Because I'm using the phone emulator, you might see me accidentally go off the screen and it's going to show you my application bar or my top menu bar. Sorry if that happens, but unfortunately it's a little hard to miss sometimes. Along with this, you might see ads, so sorry if that happens as well. So now that we have the application open, I'll go over some of the features. The first of these is camera. That'll actually go directly into your camera app and you can just start snapping photos and editing immediately. If you're on your computer, it will default to your webcam, so just know that that's the case. Next there's photos, where most of the work happens, so we'll get to that one later. Our next option is collage. This just helps us put together some quick and easy collages using several photos, so if we have some things that we want to represent together, we can use those. So in this collage option, you'll see that we can select images, and you can put them into different organizations, move them around, and do a quick, easy collage project. So if you have pets that you want to represent together, you can put them in, the, in this photo. And once you're in here, we do have options at the bottom to change layouts. And there are different things that we can do, like making rounded corners, changing the color of the brakes, and things like that. Now that that's demonstrated, I'm going to go back to the home screen. And you'll notice there's one final option down here. It's called templates. I won't really be going into it here, but know that it's there and do explore it so you can find different ideas and inspirations for things you might want to do. With the other functions covered, I'm going to go into the main area, photos. You have to start with a photo, so we'll start with this nice landscape here. Taking a look at these options here, we have first text options, so we can put type onto our photos. Once I've typed what I want to type, I'll hit next, and now my text is on the photo. I can change fonts, colors, and styles, pretty much what you would expect to find in a text editor. Once this is on there, we'll realize something pretty important to know. Once you've made a change to the image, it's permanently set. So now I can't move this text or anything like that. Just be aware of this, but know that there's an undo button at the top. You might need to change your workflow to get used to this, but I found that it's not too bad once you've started. Going back to the menu, we'll look at the different options in there. First is a simple crop. You can use this to frame in your objects or remove things that you don't want. I don't want to use the crop, so I'm going to undo it. Next is a rotate option, so we can shift how our photo is laid out. Because this is a mobile app, everything's just touch and drag, so you're using your fingers to move things around. On the computer, you use your mouse, but the mobile app is pretty intuitive. Next we have adjustments. This is a very large menu with lots of different options, so I'll just demonstrate one of them real quick here, and that's the brightness. So I can turn the brightness down, and you can see that it got darker here. Again, there are lots of different options that you can do, and different functions in those options to make your photo or art unique. Having seen all the options in adjustment, you'll really get a feel for just how many different ways you can manipulate your photo. We have auto fixes, we have blur, sharpen, splash, red eye removal, and things like that. So. There are lots of things that you can do to make things look good or make them look cool. Perhaps the coolest of these options, though, is double exposure. 
There are a lot of uses for double exposure here. The first of these is replicating the collage effect that we saw on the main menu. To demonstrate this, I'm going to first select this dog photo and put it on the image, and then I can move it around, I can pinch to zoom it, and I can rotate it here to get it set. So you can shrink the image down, once again just pinching to shrink. I'll go ahead and place my dog in the corner here. Next, once we have that set, we can go ahead and add in our cat image. And this double exposure isn't just set to integrating new images or just placing them on there without effects. You can actually change them. So for the cat image, I can make it this transparent color, make it a little bit larger, and then kind of frame it in so it's looking maybe a little bit horrifying now. But you can use this to a cool effect or just something that's kind of funny or weird like this. Next in the brushes menu, we have a few different options. We have both a brighten and a darken brush. And just how they sound, a darken brush makes things a little bit darker. And there's a lighten brush, which does the opposite, making it brighter. Then there's this pixelate brush here. You can drag it over your images, and basically it'll turn them into pixel art. It's in no way perfect, as you can see, but it can give a cool effect if you use it. Finally, we have this doodle brush. And this is just like the classic paintbrush. I'm going to draw my initials here to demonstrate that you can draw over things. And you can use this to add accents or effects to your image as well. And to finish off, I'm going to go back to our text options here and go ahead and type something. And then I'll keep the unusual typography here because I've made some art. Once we're finished with that, this actually has a set of frames and effects you can add onto your image. So I'm going to go into the frames menu. And then I'm going to pick this kind of old-fashioned, scratched-up image to layer on that effect. It kind of makes it look like an old image. Additionally, there are presets for color effects where people have already done them. This one's more on the pink side, obviously, and it's a lot brighter in the middle. Finally, all we need to do is click this Done option in the top right to finish up our image. Once you're absolutely done, you just go ahead and click this. It'll process a little bit, and it'll save it onto your device. And I'll just demonstrate opening this on my device. If I go into my gallery, I can find that the image is there just as we left it. And the, my artistic inspirational piece is done, and I can share that with family or friends if I'd like to. Again, this application is called Pixlr. It's freely available on the Play Store, on Apple Store, and you can use it online on any device that has access to the internet. That said, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.